Hey everybody, I wanted to do a gift recommendation guide for children or even families or parents uh, that needed ideas for good gifts. Not just like, hey, what's going to be exciting because it's the toy of the year, but gifts that keep lasting, books that keep getting picked up, games that never stop being played, art supplies, things that will continue to develop and cultivate creativity for a child, and also some of these for adults as well. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and talk about that. One of the Facebook groups that I'm online with is the Brave Writer group. And if you don't know who Julie Bogart is, look her up on podcasts, YouTube, blogs anywhere. She revolutionized how I thought of homeschooling. She basically the idea behind the Brave Writer lifestyle is incorporating fun, games, poetry, art, music, literature, and good writing into your homeschool curriculum and making it an exciting thing again. She's all about grace. She's all about doing you. And I really appreciate that as a parent and as a homeschooling mom. So if you're not a homeschooler, this is still a very good list, I think, of things that have really made our lives better. We've been very lucky and blessed with parents. We have three of our four parents are teachers. So my husband and I are blessed with grandparents that really value education. So here is the list. It's going to be probably a little bit long, so I kind of divided it up. If you need to listen to it in chunks, I totally understand. Um, first off, I do want to say give experiences. I can't say that enough. Uh, there have been several years where we've got the Children's Museum membership. We've got a zoo membership before. We've gotten, we have a um, Connor Prairie kind of near us, which is a historical land site museum. Uh, those have been amazing as a, <laughs> as a parent and as a homeschooling mom because I know that on a really bad day, I can just pick up my kids and we'll go on a field trip and we'll learn something and we'll have fun and it was free and paid for and those are the best experiences. So if there's an art museum or a museum or a class near you for kids, that's the first thing I'm going to tell you to give a child. Uh, and if you want something to open up for them, you know, if you give a cooking class, give them an apron or a cookbook uh, to go along with it. If you give them a museum pass, not only do you have like the little membership cards you can give them, but you can also maybe give them a book from the gift shop or something, a t-shirt that has the museum on it. Or if it's an art museum, you can get something with art uh, cards for them to learn with. So there are lots of creative things you can do. So I know some people really want to have that thing to open up do that. Just make the big part of it <laughs> the experience. I know a lot of uh, aunts and uncles and grandparents like to take their kids shopping at a bookstore. And that is a memory that they have as well as the experience to go along with it. And then the tangible souvenir at the end. So I think those are some really cool things to do if you don't want to add more items to our already bulging household. Uh, so yeah, invite them over for a cooking lesson. I actually just got to teach one of my friend's little girls how to cook chicken Parmesan last night. And that was really, really fun. Kids remember those things forever. Uh, so yeah, I really think that is a really cool thing. If they're, if they're interested in a certain country, invite them out to an authentic cuisine restaurant of that country. Um, <laughs> we've, we've taken my kids to Chinatown because they're really fascinated with Asian uh, culture and things. And that was a really fun experience. And they still talk about it like it was a whole nother country they've gone to. And I think those, those are the memories we make. So first up, do the experience. Secondly, <laughs> oh, good items that never stop. One of the things about Julie Bogart is she talks about having poetry tea time. And poetry tea time is just a time where you sit down and you read poetry or a good book together as, as a family and you have snacks. Uh, it's really that simple. It doesn't have to be overthought. It doesn't have to be the perfect poem. Uh, but poetry for a lot of adults can be intimidating. But when you start off as a child, it's, it's really not. And we've had some really great poetry tea times. I don't do it as regularly as I think I should. Um, but my kids love it whenever we do. So an idea for them for that would be, you know, get them a really cool teapot. They have some Star Wars ones out right now. Uh, we have a Winnie the Pooh one that I had from childhood. And yeah, those are some fun things to kind of make an experience for them that they can keep using in their homeschool life. Uh, these are some of the poetry books 
that we've used. I actually just bought this one. I'm really excited about it. It's Maya Angelou, Amazing Peace, A Christmas Poem. And it just talks about um, the love and the grace and the peace and the multiculturalism and diversity that Christmas can bring. So I thought it was a fitting buy for the season. We have this one, A Child's Introduction to Poetry, and I got it secondhand, so it does not have the CD included, but it, if you get it with, with the CD, it actually has the people reading the book, or the poems, and it's kind of got lots of different suggestions, like this one says, play track 26, and then talks about it, so if you feel overwhelmed that you don't know enough about poetry, this is a great guide, and this this series, we also have A Story of the Orchestra, A Child's Introduction to the World. This series is phenomenal. Um, so, yeah, on every subject, I recommend this. And it's put out by, uh, do, 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 do. let me look. Michael Driscoll wrote this one, but it's Black Dog and Lethenthal Publishers. So, um, and this one I love. It's the Barefoot Book of Classic Poems. And it has a lot of different classic poems in here. There's some really beautiful, diverse art, which I always appreciate. You know, you know that about me by now. Um, Barefoot Books is a publisher that I really appreciate. They also do a podcast that's available for free uh, with different narrators narrating world tales from around the globe. And I think that's a really cool thing. My, my kids have always loved listening to them. And some of the stories I think we've heard probably upwards of 20 times. So that's a free podcast recommendation, <laughs> Barefoot Books. So those are some good suggestions. Also, um, Marilyn Singer writes some amazing poetry books. She did one, A Stick is an Excellent Thing. She did one on the presidents we actually just got done with for Halloween. She has Monster Museum and one other one that's just a fun. If you're looking for something that appeals, especially to uh, maybe more adventuresome ch children or uh, boys that like gross things, Marilyn Singer is a really good poetry person to check out for kids. The other thing about uh, Brave Writer is she talks about incorporating games and fun. Now for us, this is pretty normal and I've done several videos on good game recommendations. I can link that below. These are some of my favorite ones for practicing math that we've used right now. There is Zeus on the Loose. This one has my middle child adding and subtracting very quickly now. We've, I don't think it's gotten old. We still like stealing Zeus from it. And it's got, you know, some of the mythological, uh, gods and goddesses in it if you want to get some Greek culture in. <laughs> the next one is Blockus, and we just got this one. It's good on pattern rec recognition, some strategy. Uh, it's very easy to play, and it's there's no language barrier on it. So especially if you're coming from a household where the parents are a little bit, my brother-in-law is a little bit more nervous about using his English. So a lot of games have some kind of complicated language for somebody whose English is a second language. Blockus just just transcends all of that. And I think it's really not intimidating, but fun. And the other one is Yahtzee. And I remember loving this from childhood. Uh, it gets you really good at multiplication, strategizing, adding. Uh, I don't really think there's a better game for math out there than Yahtzee. <laughs> uh, old standbys, right? So another thing that Julie Bogart talks about is uh, introducing music and uh, drama to your children. So there's some really great dramatic uh, DVDs you can get of different Shakespearean things. My children really love The Taming of the Shrew with Elizabeth Taylor. Um, there's also, we have The Story of the Orchestra, which this one is the same as The Child's Introduction to Poetry, and it has a CD to go along with it. And again, if you are nervous about not knowing anything about the orchestra, it has prompts on how to teach uh, the different things that they want to talk about. So, and it introduces all the different instruments of the orchestra and it's very non-threatening to use. So that's one thing. Uh, another thing, I actually just bought these at Costco. I'm really excited about, and it's Shakespeare stories. Uh, these are all, I think there's 15 of them and it's just a different, everything's split up, but they're little short illustrated, you know, you could, um, versions of Shakespeare. So how we have done Shakespeare in the past is I kind of will get a picture book, read out of that. We also have, 
the Brick Shakespeare collection. If you don't know that these exist, these exist. They also have Greek myths. They have fairy tales. I um, We have the Illustrated Bible. There's several different ones. Brick History is another one that if you have a history lover, Brick History is a great one to pick up for your kids. So we go through a couple different versions of the Shakespeare story and then we watch the video um, of it so you can kind of see the children make connections with things. I also haven't read this yet, but I've only heard good things. It's Ken Ludwig's How to Teach Your Children Shakespeare. And I think he has some great, I've listened to several podcast interviews with him. He has some several great insights on how to teach Shakespeare for somebody who is a novice. Uh, I love Shakespeare. I've really enjoyed seeing those productions. I'm excited about taking my children when they get bigger. So yes, those are some good ones. Oh, I know we have a lot. Okay, the next thing that I think is really important for uh, Brave Writer lifestyle is nature. Uh, and I think a lot of people have gotten more on, online with, um, online, on band. I don't know what word I'm trying to say. They've gotten more in tune with the idea of nature being really important. Richard Louv talks about that in Last Child in the Woods about how a lot of children just don't spend enough time in nature and we're losing that connection. We're misunderstanding uh, conservation efforts quite a bit because of it. And so here's some great science things. You can get them a rock tumbler. Assemble a nature kit with binoculars and a, micro, a little microscope. They have several that are under $10 on Amazon where you can go out and have them look at, at things up close. You can get some several different field guides. These are some of our favorite field guides, although there's so many into the field. Guide at Walk on the Beach by Lori Goldman, and this one's by Emily Labor Warren. It's into the field. Uh, there's also, you know, we have these which are pretty, pretty cheap where you can just look through and it magnifies what's inside. My son accidentally left a cricket in here last week and it died. <laughs> so we had to talk about what remembering that they, they need certain things, they can't just live indefinitely in your room. Wasting away to nothing. I felt really, really bad for for the insect. Uh, this is another game we love, and I've, I've talked about it before. Card line animals. You sort the animals by height, weight, or lifespan. This is super fun for anybody. We also have rock on. So if you have a rock collector, you know, get them a field guide to rocks and minerals. Get them this game that actually comes with the different rock samples in it, and you can play bingo with them and answer questions. So this has been really fun. Uh, I will never stop saying anything bad about this or anything bad, anything good. <laughs> Nature anatomy and farm anatomy by Julia Rothman. This is just a really beautiful nature guide and it kind of encourages you to draw more. I actually have another one, the law's guide to nature journaling and illustrating. It's in the other room. I have it from the library uh, because we haven't purchased it yet. That one's a little bit pricier because it's close to $25, $30, but it is the most in-depth guide I've ever seen on painting, drawing, nature. Uh, and it really excites me as an artist to get better at it. So uh, yeah, I've checked it out from the library a couple times now. This one, Into the Forest, Nature's Food Chain Game. This is really fun for getting kids to recognize that everything's kind of a web of life. And uh, it also helps with math skills too. So we like playing this one quite a bit. Some other ones, there's I Love Dirt 52 activities to help you and your kids. Nature Smart, which is just different awesome projects you can use with nature items, getting them to think creatively. And this other one, the Nature Connection, which we're using kind of as our spine for nature this year uh, for science. So, and it has every, for every month, there's a different activity you can do. Other suggestions, telescopes, um, star constellation guides. I know that there's the ch Children's Guide to Astronomy in the same series that we've talked about. So that might be another good thing to check out. Find out what the child is really interested in and just cultivate that. All right. So that is the first part. I feel like I need to take a break so you guys don't get too checked out. So this will be part one. And if you keep watching in another video, I'm going to do part two, which will talk more about history, geography, uh, art, and writing uh, gift ideas. So thanks. Bye.